Great morning, holy brothers! Thank you so much for joining us on our pathway to peace inside the Garden of Peace. If you're following along, along we're on page 332, and today's lesson is going to be called Boasting Blessings. That's right, yesterday we were talking about the how many blessings do we have under the chuppah, the marriage canopy? What's the number? Seven, of course. We talked about seven. What is the number of complete physicality? Remember two examples that we gave from yesterday? Don't give me all ten, just two. Yeah, the, the music notes. Oh, he remembers. And the rainbow. Bingo! Bada -ba -bum. Okay, so we talked about what they were, and today we're going to go through them themselves. Although, I find it Tell me. strange that Hashem made the seven colors of the rainbow when the rainbow represents destruction. It's like... Again, we're talking... The rainbow was used afterwards as a sign, but the entity of what it entails, not necessarily the rainbow itself, but the colors of the world uh, in the spectrum of light. Right. When you have light that passes through glass and gets diffused... So what are what is the component? What are the components? What are the building blocks? Is everything made up of? It's the Roy G. Biv. Right. Those are the colors of it. it. Happens to be that one of the things that the colors is used for in a rainbow was used for that. Okay, but it's for everything. It's not just the rainbow. Right. It's all. It's the white light when it's visible. What it is. Right. I guess. Basically, made up of. Yes. Good question. Hopefully, good answer. Okay. The first blessing, blessed are you, Hashem, our God, King of the universe, who creates fruit of the vine. Or Priha, Gafen. That's the blessing we say over, we have wine or grape juice, and you drink, and to celebrate an occasion in Jewish Judaism. As we explained previously, the ceremonies occasionally begin with a blessing over wine in many aspects of life. Even from birth, when we have the circumcision, to the wedding, to many of the holidays. And the second blessing is, Blessed are you, Hashem, our God, King of the universe, who created everything for His glory. This is a message to the chasen, to the groom. We're not just saying, oh, you know, God, glorious. What's the point? What's the meaning? What's the message? So he's saying that you created everything for His glory, meaning you should... You're taking a wife in order, not just to fulfill your desires, your needs, your lusts, just to procreate, but we're doing so as a mitzvah. Everything we do, we want to do as to fulfill a commandment, to enhance our spirituality, and to come closer to connect to our Creator. That's our goal. What are you here for in life? And is everything that you're here for the reason about your driving purpose for what you're doing. Try to understand what am I, the thing I'm doing right now, is that bringing me closer to my goal? Is that making me one step closer or one step further back? What is it accomplishing? So by taking a wife, we are doing so to enhance God's glory, not for your own personal glory and enjoyment and lust, but use it to become more spiritual to enhance your connectivity with God. Everything that we do, you can either do it for your own selfishness, for your own ego, or for your own arrogance, or to put yourself solely connecting to Hashem. Solely and solely. Get it? Third blessing. Blessed are you, Hashem, our God, King of the universe, who fashioned the man. The chasa now blesses Hashem, in becoming a complete person. Up until this point, no matter who you are, no matter what you've done, what you've accomplished in life, you have been half. You are not whole. Your soul has been lacking its partner, its other half. Up until now, before we found this soul mate, people, we don't realize why it's called a soul mate, because your soul is becoming whole again, and it's made its other half is able to get unified, not just physically in bed, but spiritually coming back together, a completeness, a oneness. Because before this, it was lacking, incomplete. Fourth blessing, blessed are you, Hashem, our God, 
Now, every time you go into the chuppah and you hear these blessings, or you go to a wedding, you're going to understand the deeper meaning and what really your intention, your kavanah should be. And you can share that with them as well. Blessed are you, Hashem, our God, King of the universe, who fashioned man in his image, in the image of his likeness, and prepared for him from himself a building for eternity. Blessed are you, Hashem, who fashioned the man. So now here, the chas and the groom expresses his gratitude to Hashem for creating mankind in his image, in divine image. From this human created in divine image, Hashem took, they say, the rib from man and built from it a building for all eternity. They say that Hashem took Adam and pulled him apart to create woman. And then Rashi talks about that Adam was literally half man and half woman, front and back, depending on which way he was facing. And Hashem said, I'm going to split it in half down the middle, pull apart the ribs, and then fashion the backs, which is why everything is on our front of our face, because on the back of our head used to be the other face. So all the parts are on the front, all the parts were on the front, <laughs> pulled them apart, sealed it, and then turned them back front to front, and said, hello, here, meet your other half. Because it literally was his other half. What a picture. Meet your partner, meet the person who's going to be your soulmate to help you do everything you need to in life. Use her as a means to perfect yourself. Don't argue with her, because then you're arguing with yourself, and you're not both accomplishing your mission together. So, here's your building for eternity. The wife created from the ribs is the story of Adam and Eve, Adam and Eve, and therefore the husband's building for eternity. For without her, he has no building. For without her, he has no house, he has no home, he has no foundation in life. Our sages, therefore, would refer to their wives in the Gemara and all the teachings as a bias. Because for the wife is the home. Literally, figuratively, spiritually. Do not ever think that only Eve was created from a part of Adam. An intrinsic part of creation is that every single man, each one, feels when he's doing his job as a husband and what he's supposed to be doing in life, that his wife is a part of him like literally his own limbs. The same way that you use your hands to do a job, you don't think of your hands as a separate entity from yourself. You've got to be cuckoo in your mind in a loony bin to think your hands act on their own. Your mind sends messages to your muscles and they move. 99.9% .9 of the time, you don't even think about that process. You don't think about the synapses, all the contractions. You know, how, how am I going to pick up my phone right now? You just do it. Your hand goes out and picks it up. You're thinking about the way that everything works for that to happen. It's all going on under the scenes subconsciously. There's so many things that we should be thanking Hashem for that work without us having to do the equations and the processes. Oh, I want to move my finger now. How many things do I have to think about for it to go up? Whoa! Amazing. Crazy. But we take that for granted ridiculously. And we say that our finger moves not just because we move it, but we will it. And God moves it. Everything in life we can only will and God makes happen and put into action. It's amazing. Therefore, his wife is a part of him like his own limbs. Our sages say, one's wife is tantamount to one's own body. We say it all the time. But you actually think about it. We say, ishto ke, you know the words? Ki gufo. A woman is like his body. And it comes around through halacha. It comes around through practical application in halacha. Many things that you can do for your wife, that when you do it as, as if she did it, or as if, as if you did it for yourself. Because a woman is as if she is part of your body, because she literally was back in the day. And that happens every single time another person is born. God splits them into two, 
the souls, throws them down into two bodies, and it's our job to bring it all back home, bringing it back home together. A husband, therefore, when he realizes this and knows it with his whole being and every fiber inside his body, should avoid anger at all costs, no matter what. We said the Rambam a thousand times. Never is one allowed to have any anger or arrogance in his life. Zero percent. Stop for a second. When you have that flaring up inside you, all of a sudden the fire is burning because somebody cut you off in traffic or somebody was chopping in you next to the line and brushed against you. The first thing that happens, you want to go, ah! You want to yell at them. You want to start cursing. You want to get back at them. You selfish, egocentral, egotistic maniac. Stop. The Torah says that is never allowed. Hello, check yourself before you wreck yourself. Not allowed. Always narrow, straight road. Can't go too far to the right, too far to the left, except for these two things. Yeah, you always have to be on that path, not veering off. But when it comes to anger and arrogance, 0% is allowed. Not one zero zero zero. Get the 10 out of here. You're left with nothing. So if that's the case, can you imagine when it comes to your wife? Al-achas kama v'kama, how much more so? Not only do you have a prohibition to never get angry, but it's, this is your wife. This is your literal other self. This is a half of you that you're looking at. Being angry at your wife, at your woman, at your other half, that soul, is like being angry at his own body. It's so silly. It's so selfish. It doesn't even make sense. It's illogical to be mad at your hands for grabbing an item or a book or a phone. You say, hey, and why are you so dumb? Why are you so silly? Why are you such an idiot? You're talking to your hand for your hand doing something. But you know a billion percent in your bottom of your mind that you are the one controlling completely every single action that happens from your hand. You, you, nobody, hopefully, is psychotic enough that's listening to this, that's learning this, that's reading this, that doesn't understand when you move your foot to get up in the morning or you go walk across the street that you are in complete control of your body. You don't even think about it. You just know it with every fiber of your being. The same way your hand moves has to be the same way you understand that when your wife does something, it is stemming from yourself. That's it. Just remember that. When your wife does, how can you get angry at your wife when it's you? It makes literally no sense. I'm going to smack you in the face. Pat you. Wake up. What are you doing? Recognize this. You got to keep it on your mind, people. He should always empathize with his wife. He should always rejoice when she's happy. You need to be happy. And cringing when she's in pain, when she's hurting, not laughing at her, not brushing it off, not saying this is not my responsibility. Oh, I don't feel bad for you. Wait, get, wait, wait, get, wait. get over it. Here we go. Here we go. Go ahead. <laughs> so you're telling me that you don't call her a loser. But she's never had it, right? <laughs> <laughs> you're not like, come on, stop being a piker. <laughs> what is wrong with you? What is wrong with you, woman? Wake up. Put a brain in your head. Open your skull and We're drop it back inside. <laughs> How can you even think like that? You're off your rocker. You're a wacko. You're a lunatic. You're emotional. Calm down. Calm down. How many husbands say to their wives, calm down? But it shouldn't have husband at least like try. What happens when a husband says calm down? Well, it's like the worst thing. The wives! Like, she does exactly the opposite. Why are you trying to calm down? Crazy. <laughs> stop acting crazy. Stop, yeah, stop acting crazy. I'm not crazy. I didn't call you crazy. I just said stop acting crazy. Because <laughs> that's going to... Oh, she was waiting for you just to tell her stop <laughs> acting crazy. Thank you so much for talking. I, I couldn't... I was waiting for you to say it. Now that you said it, I can do it. Oh, I was only waiting for You're you to right. say it. I was acting You're right. right. You're 100% correct. I was out of line. I don't know what I was thinking. You're the best. Oh, thank you. Yeah, what do you want to say? But <laughs> shouldn't the husband, like, give his husband a little hizuk? His husband? Her, her husband. Hopefully his wife. Hizuk, yeah. Right. Like, yeah. shouldn't the husband give hizuk when 
Hizik? Hizik. For what? I don't know, like, let's say she's like... Let's give a real-life example. I don't know, maybe she's, like, feeling stressed at work or something like that. And, you know, I don't know, like, maybe almost, uh, I don't know, motivated. Like, do you or do you not remember the video that I sent you called It's Not About the Nail? <laughs> what? I don't remember. You don't remember? Nobody forgets that video. Wait, the nail? Do we have to... Reiterate this, yes. The woman is sitting with her husband on the couch and she's got a giant nail. All oh, right, you don't point out the nail. Right. No, out you're, not, you're not pointing anything out to her. You're just. She's in trouble. Out. She's feeling right. bad. Be pressures with the boss. And she's and... talking to him on the couch about all her problems. And what is he saying? I mean, I think there's a freaking nail sticking out of your head! She's like, what's wrong with you? It's not that. You understand? I go, there's a pain in my head, I'm telling you. It's throbbing. Well, how do you, it's I'm, hurting me. Like, I mean, I and he's know. like, there's a nail in your head. She's no, like, stop telling I me. Mean, like, I don't want to hear about that. I'm not, telling her, I'm not saying, like, give her like, solution. a solution. I'm saying, I'm saying. What she wants you to do is empathize with her. Right. She wants you to hear her. She wants you to come down to her level of what she's feeling. The pain, the agony, the anxiety. The stress, whatever it might be, right. I'm not be saying there the with her. But I'm saying, like, say, like, oh, you're the best, you're awesome, you've got like uplift. Sometimes her. she doesn't want to hear that. She wants to wallow. So in how do you know right? when she wants to hear it or not? Because of her tone, because of her emotions, whatever it is that she's feeling, just be with her. Uh -huh. Be one with her. Picture if that was happening to me, literally, how would I be feeling? And that's what she wants you to be with her. Uh -huh. Right. So people like to if she them. asks for solutions, then, you be the first one to run and help her. Right. If she wants you to say, hey, yeah, the other person's an idiot, so you shouldn't feel that way, don't invalidate her feelings. Right. No, you know, Hasbro Shalom say you don't feel, you have a right to feel that way, absolutely. But you want Now you have a right to feel that way. I understand. Right. I hear you. I feel you. This is. Sad, this is crazy, this is really good, whatever it is, I guess. whatever it might be. Right. Okay. So, Ari 11, a blessed memory, once escorted his wife to the doctor. We had the story early in the book, and she had severe leg pain. When the doctor asked him what the problem was, why they're coming in, Ari jumped and spoke and yelled and said, Our leg is hurting us! Our leg! Not her leg! Now look what's wrong with her! This is what we're here for. Our leg is hurting. He literally felt her pain as if it was his own. If a hand is cut, you say, our hand is hurting. My hand is hurting, not her hand. It is oneness. This is the goal that we have to get to. It's not easy. We're not saying it's simple, but at least be able to know what we want to strive towards to work together, to feel the unity and the oneness in life with your wife and with God, absolutely. To use that as a means to show the reflection of how our relationship is being measured. And with that, have an awesome day, Amazing rest of your day.